All right, uh, welcome everyone to the uh, Neary Monthly Seminar. We're very pleased to have um, David and uh, John um, with us today uh, to present uh, the paper on management practices in Northern Ireland. Um, I think anyone who's had a passing interest in productivity in Northern Ireland over the last number of years will know that this is a piece that has been lingering in the background of every conference if only somebody would do some sort of survey of management practices to see um, whether we could find um, a missing piece of the productivity puzzle there. And so we're very glad that somebody finally has. Um, but without further ado, I'll leave it over to David. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, so yes, as Paul said, this is our report on management practices in North Ireland. It's been part of our work at the North Ireland Productivity Forum. And we've been trying to understand more about what's happening uh, in North Ireland, particularly as well uh, post-COVID. Oh, okay. Oh, the jump away. Okay. I have to point it in that direction. That's okay. Um, so in terms of a firm and its productivity and where management practices fit into this, so we normally think about with a firm in terms of capital inputs and also labour inputs. So capital in terms of machinery, buildings, and also intangible things like software. Um, and then people who have their skills and their well-being matters, but then also how those individuals are managed. All this then feeds through into a firm's productivity. Uh, but we have to understand all these different aspects to sort of understand why um, North Ireland has traditionally lagged behind in terms of productivity. And um, so what we've done in this report is focus very much on this management skills aspect to understand how that contributes um, to firm performance. So in terms of our motivation for this piece, um, there have been several explanations for North Ireland's long run productivity gap. So this is something we looked at as part of the North Ireland Forum in our insights paper, uh, looking at the reasons for low producti productivity in North Ireland. And an area that's often emphasized is around human capital, uh, particularly around qualifications. But within that, there's been relatively little work on the role of management practices, how those people actually use within a business and to try and uh, generate um, higher productivity. Uh, and particularly, for Northern Ireland, there's been very little research. So we can go back to one of the early reports about the Northern Ireland economy by Alison Cuthbert, and they do mention uh, about the potential issue to do with management practices. However, they don't go into any detail about this. Um, in the 1990s, there, has, there was some mention or more mention of the fact that management practices within uh, firms in Northern Ireland may contribute to lower productivity. But again, there wasn't any empirical evidence around this. And then the work of Bloom and Van Rienen, who have been the leaders in terms of research around management practices internationally. They did actually include North Ireland um, in their study in 2010. However, it's for a very small sample size, and they weren't focusing on North Ireland. And it was more about internationally what was uh, important for management. So although there has been this recognition that management practices do matter, um, there's been very little evidence to actually demonstrate what effect they may have for firms uh, and firm performance. So this is really what we've been trying to get at with our uh, research. Also, there's the question of why should we care um, about trying to understand management practices in Northern Ireland? Well, one of the key things that we recognize and one of the motivations for doing this piece of work was the fact that the Office for National Statistics actually do measure management practices in Great Britain, but they don't include uh, Northern Ireland in their management and expectation survey. So we have this grey out Northern Ireland, which doesn't currently have a score. Uh, although we've heard recently that the ONS is actually going to start including Northern Ireland um, from their most recent survey, which was just at the end of 2023. There's also the issue of Brexit and the fact that um, the potential for firms here to benefit from dual market access. However, they will need to be well managed to be able to take advantage of these opportunities. And also, anecdotally, uh, persistent underperformance in Northern Ireland's economy has been linked to family firms 
uh, but we don't have any evidence around that. Um, so it's a question that has been raised, but we can't say yes or no uh, as to whether that matters. And um, so these are also areas that motivate why uh, we particularly want to look uh, at management practices uh, in Northern Ireland. So in terms of our two main research questions, uh, the first is whether or not there's a relationship between um, the characteristics of firms in Northern Ireland and their management practices. Are certain types of firms associated with poor management practices or better management practices? And our second question is whether or not we can link the management practices of firms here to some different measures of performance. So whether it be productivity, uh, whether it be things like working from home um, or profitability or digitalization, uh, we've looked at trying to look at these different measures um, of firm performance and see do management practices actually lead uh, to better outcomes. So the key thing here then is what management practices actually are. And in this context, they mean something very specific. So what we're looking at in this report is around structured management practices. And this is based on the work of Bloom and Van Rienen um, and also the Office for National Statistics and their Management Expectations Survey. And this is where management practices in a business are measured through scoring um, and measured across different areas um, of management. And there are four key areas that are scored um, particularly through what ONS do and therefore what we do as well. So this includes continuous improvement practices. So what um, do firms do whenever they encounter a problem? How do they react to that and how do they try and improve the future? Key performance indicators. So what key performance indicators do they use and how often are they reviewed? Targets, whether the business has targets for the future, whether these are stretching and again, whether these are reviewed. And then employment practices. So how employees are managed in terms of training, tracking their performance, uh, rewarding good performance, and also hiring new employees as well. So these four key areas of structured management practices are what we look at with our survey uh, and our scoring. In terms of the survey itself, uh, we conducted it in 2022. And we had 25 questions that we asked businesses to respond to. 19 of these questions were identical to the Office for National Statistics and their Management Expectations Survey. So that allows us to compare firms in Northern Ireland with those in Great Britain, albeit there are caveats with that, and which I'll mention uh, whenever I'm showing the scores. We also then added new questions because there are other aspects we wanted to look at in more detail. Uh, so these include the proportion of the firm's revenue that comes from different uh, markets and locations, uh, the number and location of sites of the firm. So is it only located in Northern Ireland or is it across multiple sites or multiple locations? Uh, whether or not the firm does have some leadership training program uh, for managers, the extent of government support that the firm receives, and also the extent of digitalization within the business. So how is it used technology to try and automate certain processes or uh, manage the running of the firm? We supplement that data that we collect with the survey with additional data from companies' house records. And this is around um, other uh, characteristics of the firm. So the age of the firm, the number of subsidiaries it has, and also the financial performance of the firm as well. Uh, and then we score firms' responses to our survey between zero and one. So zero is worst practice and one is best practice. And therefore firms get a score somewhere between zero and one. Uh, so this is an example of the very first question in the survey. Uh, the respondents don't get to see the numbers that are here, uh, but these numbers basically show what is best and worst practice. So depending on what option uh, with these multiple choice questions they um, choose. They get a score for the question. And then across the scored questions, we basically just take a simple average to give the firm score. In terms of the sample and uh, what it looked like, so we had two waves during 2022. We had a first smaller wave in March to July, 
And then we've had a larger wave in October to December. We used company's house data to basically construct what we we're going to use for the sample. And so we had a bit over 8,000 firms that were surveyed. We only had 272 responses. So it is quite a low response rate, only 3.3%. And that may reflect the fact that firms are maybe not as interested in responding or in management practices. But um, we do think that the sample does reflect the overall population. So if we look at the graphs on the right-hand side, we can see in terms of the different industries uh, of respondents, broadly, most industries are fairly similar in terms of our sample versus the population. And if we take the three largest industries, they're roughly the same overall contribution. So we're not um, picking up particularly small industries uh, and over-representing them. We can also look at the distribution of the size of firms. Um, so we've included micro businesses in our survey. So the Office for National Statistics don't include these micro firms of under 10 employees, uh, but we have included them. So they are underrepresented in our survey uh, responses, but the other three categories of small, medium, and large are actually in proportion to the overall population if you remove micro businesses. And so we are reflective of the population in terms of size in that sense. So this is our overall distribution of the management score in terms of some summary statistics um, for our scores. Uh, so the average score from Northern Ireland was 0.66, which is actually higher than the figure for Great Britain in 2020, which was 0.6. And it was actually as well higher than uh, GB in 2016, when it was only 0.5. So our average is higher. But the overall distribution looks very similar. So we have the same characteristic of most firms being clustered around approximately around the average, but then this long tail um, of underperforming firms. Um, and there are some caveats around North Ireland's average being higher. So we don't want to say that simply North Ireland has better management practices amongst its firms. We want to qualify that by firstly saying this is for a different year. It is a post-COVID period. And um, so potentially this could reflect the fact that maybe some firms have disappeared and had poor management practices. Um, so that could affect this if you re-ran it for Great Britain. And as well, our sampling strategy was slightly different. ONS use a business register. We use company's house data. Uh, so the sample is a little bit different. Um, and also our waiting procedure is slightly different as well. And um, so there are caveats around this. Also our sample size is a lot smaller. Um, but overall, the distribution does look very similar, um, which is quite reassuring. We can break down the overall management score into its different components. Um, and we see that actually in a couple of areas, Northern Ireland performs quite similarly um, to GB. So in terms of continuous improvement, it's almost identical. Um, as well, in terms of targets, it's a little bit behind. Um, so the score for North Ireland is a little bit lower, um, but still relatively close. Um, in terms of key performance indicators, actually the score for North Ireland is quite a bit higher. We don't really have an explanation for why that is. But we did notice for employment practices, the score is again also higher. And what we think might explain this is the fact that labour laws are different here. And therefore, this area of employment practices very much directly relates and to those areas that would relate um, to uh, labour law in Northern Ireland. So it could reflect that as to why firms here have a slightly higher score in this area. In terms of the score by industry, um, we find that across most industries, as you'd expect with the overall average being slightly higher, the scores for most industries are slightly higher in Northern Ireland than Great Britain. And um, apart from non-manufacturing production, uh, which is just slightly lower uh, than in GB. Um, but overall, most industries are just slightly higher um, than the previous most recent results uh, for Great Britain. In terms of firm size, we do see what we would expect to see, that the largest firms have the best management practices. Uh, so they have an average of 0.76, which is much higher, obviously, than the overall average of 0.66. Uh, and we do see this sort of decrease in management practices as we go down towards smaller firms. And we do see with these micro businesses, the fact that they do have 
um, the worst management practices in comparison, uh, which probably you might expect given they're much smaller, they probably don't need to um, use structured management practices as much. Um, but it's interesting to see where they're placed compared to the other groups, given ONS hasn't previously sort of looked uh, at the smallest firms. We can also look at the distribution of management practice scores across Northern Ireland and across local council areas. So on the left-hand side, we have the average management score by a local government district. Um, and we can see that the highest scores are generally in the north and east. So Belfast uh, into Antrim and Causeway Coast. If you look though at the median score, we don't really see as clear a spatial pattern. Um, so there is a bit of a difference in terms of distributions. Though we do see that Mid-Ulster, for example, and Middle East Antrim and Belfast consistently have high scores across both. Um, but this is unweighted data for these maps. Uh, it's on a much smaller sample, obviously, for these areas. So we don't read too much into this sort of immediate summary um, of management practices across North Ireland. And that sort of brings me to what our main part of our analysis is within this report. So those pre previous diagrams and graphs show the sort of summary statistics for certain aspects of firm characteristics. But then what we do is we take all of these together and we do some regression analysis to try and understand if we include all these characteristics, what actually matters and what doesn't. Um, so on the left-hand side, we have different characteristics to do with the firm. Uh, so we have its age, its size, um, and then we look in turn at different particular characteristics. So these are related either to the survey responses themselves um, about the firm's leadership training, for example, uh, or other information that we get from companies' house data. And basically what we do is we go through, including each of these one by one to understand in isolation, do they matter? But then at the end, we do a full regression to understand, well, if we include everything, what actually um, still retains some significance statistically, uh, what matters, um, and what things, if you control for other characteristics, no longer matter. So rather than try and uh, go through these all individually, um, I have a summary here of basically what we found of looking at the firm characteristics and the firm's management score. So what's the relationship between um, these two aspects? So we find that better management practices are found in firms that have a higher proportion of managers who've taken a leadership course, and that has quite a strong uh, result. Also, better managed firms have a higher proportion of highly qualified managers. So these are managers with degree level or level six or above uh, qualifications. We also find larger firms have better management practices. Uh, so the larger the firm is, the more employees it has, it tends to have better management practices. And we also find that firms with high, a higher number of subsidiaries, so a more complex organization or firm, also tends to have better management practices as well. In terms of the reverse, we do find that some particular characteristics are associated with poor management practices. So if your firm is one that basically only sells to the domestic Northern Ireland market, you tend to have worse management practices compared to your peers. So the higher the proportion of your turnover that comes from Northern Ireland, um, the lower your management score. We also find some evidence to suggest that second generation family managed firms do have um, slightly worse management practices than other types of ownership. And this is a very specific type of family ownership. So this is where it is a family owned firm that is, has been passed on to uh, second generations, no longer the original founder of the firm, but it also has to be family managed as well. So we don't find this result for second generation family firms that are managed by a non-family member. It's this specific combination and it shows up as having a slightly lower management score. Although it just misses out for statistical significance on our very final regression, but it's based on a very small number of observations. So um, it's a, a tentative result. And we do also find that manufacturing and real estate, whenever we control for everything else, also have lower management practices uh, than other industries. 
uh, which is partly a surprise because we think of manufacturing as the kind of industry and business that would adopt these processes, yet we're finding that controlling for all other characteristics, they still have lower uh, margin practices. There are some aspects that we find no relationship with management practices. So for example, if you're a multinational firm, that would tend to be associated with higher management practices or higher score. We don't find any relationship for multinationals, for instance. Um, so there are some aspects in the literature that are generally held up as mattering that we find um, don't matter. After looking at those characteristics, we then look at the firm outcomes in terms of firm performance. So again, we look at different aspects here of different outcomes. So uh, in this half of the table on the left-hand side, we look at managers and non-managers and the extent of working from home before, both before COVID-19 and after COVID-19 and to see whether or not a better managed firm tended to have more of its employees working from home. And really, we only find one tentative area where there might be an association between management practices and working from home. And this is around managers uh, in 2022, post COVID. And um, there's a borderline result that suggests that if a firm has better management practices, they tend to have more managers who work from home. Um, but again, it's not, doesn't quite reach statistical significance. And this is the only area where we find an association or an almost an association um, between management practices and working from home. We don't find any relationship for employees um, or pre-COVID-19. We then also look at digitalization. And this is basically the extent of a firm's processes that are digitized. So it could be to do with customer management and to do with um, employment. Um, tracking employees and their performance. And we find that a firm that has better management practices tends to have a greater extent of digitalization within the business. And um, so you have more of these processes that are digitized and even controlling for the size of the firm as well. And um, so it does suggest that better management practices may be associated therefore with greater um, innovation um, or greater digitalization. We also then do look at productivity and profitability. We're very restricted in what we can say about productivity. So unfortunately with the data we have access to, we had a very small number of observations, only 42. So we don't find any statistically significant relationship between management practices and productivity. However, it is still a positive relationship, at least in terms of the coefficient here. So that's somewhat reassuring. Um, however, we do find that firms with better management practices do have higher profit margins, and that result is statistically significant at the 10% level. So there is some evidence to suggest that yes, if you have better management practices, you are more profitable. We also then look at whether or not a firm is an exporter. Um, so in this regression, we basically look at whether a firm does export or whether it's purely a, a firm that sells domestically. And what we find is firms with um, better management practices are more likely to be an exporter. Um, but again, this is so the relationship between these two. Um, we're not necessarily saying which is causal, which causes which, um, given the limitations we have uh, with the data. And um, so with the productivity and profit margin, we are taking those that data from companies' house for the financial aspects. And then with the exporter, yes, that we do have some people who just didn't fill out the percentage of where their turnover goes to. So it has a bit more restricted sample. So in terms of overview of those results, we do have some tentative evidence about working from home around managers, but just for 2022. And there is some evidence that better management score uh, is associ associated with a greater extent of digitalization. Productivity isn't statistically significant. However, in terms of a profit margin, if you have a 0.1 or a 10 percentage point increase in the management practices score, it leads to an 18% increase in the profit margin of the firm. And we do find that better managed firms are therefore more likely to be exporters. So in terms of what those results mean um, in conclusion, 
Our findings do generally support what has been found before in other literature, albeit it hasn't been looked at from North Ireland in this kind of detail previously. So we do find some of the things that you'd expect to see or have been shown in other countries are reflected again for North Ireland and its performance. Human capital is the most important aspect whenever it comes to uh, management practices. So whenever we look at the relative importance of the different characteristics we look at, by far human capital of managers is what explains most of the variation between firms and their management practices. And this is a combination of qualifications and training. So it's not just about the qualifications managers have, it's also about the training that they receive on an ongoing uh, basis. Um, within the firm. And we do find that better management practices are linked to some of these firm outcomes, so higher profits, um, greater digitalization, and um, being an exporter. And from this, we basically suggest potential um, action points or policies for government, but also things that businesses um, could do based on these results. So particularly um, recognizing the fact that if we're living through a time of the adoption of AI and new technology. What these results show is the fact that actually management, management training, improving management practices is an important element um, of the adoption of new technology for firms um, in terms of how they integrate that, integrate that into the business. Human capital is also key. So for a business, it is going to be about investing in training and that being an ongoing process. But for policymakers, yes, also having well-qualified managers, um, but also providing training for them as well. And finally, there are areas that government policy can focus on. So particularly small firms, second generation family managed firms, and particularly domestic market firms who operate within Northern Ireland are those most in need of support around management practices. And for businesses, really the message is to be proactive to take on opportunities to improve management practices and because it does show that they do matter um, for firm performance. So those are our results from our report. Uh, thank you very much uh, for listening. Thank you. Um, for questions. I, my, I thanks David for the presentation. I think the one that comes across to me, and maybe it's a pre-existing bias I have, but the one-family uh, firm 